In recent past, we've seen an increased number of exhibitions that speak to technology and science. That is both at continental level and Zambia as a country. Those exhibitions are depicting the very best of innovations that are coming from all across the sectors. The big question is, we have seen technology being exhibited at such forums, but why are they not being actualized? The problem could be with funding, but what are the funders saying? Welcome to the land of creative thinkers, the Zambian genius. If you go to our Facebook page, The Zambian Genius, you'll be able to find how well you can get your innovation to all of us. We've given instructions on how best you can be able to film. Even with your simple phone, you can still film that innovation and we can be able to show it. But only if you capture it in landscape format. Your phone should be held in landscape. Then be stable. Ensure that your sound quality is equally good. Uh, we will be able to accept that particular innovative uh, idea so that we can show it to the nation so they can appreciate what you also have most recently in the country we woke up to a very innovative and creative piece of news he has devised a plan on the best way to be able to generate electricity just with waters on the river in the lake what we can do is simply put this machine on the waters and then let it do the job and so far it has been able to demonstrate that its capability, it's um, able to generate five kilowatts of power up to one megawatts. If that is pumped into the main grid, it will make a difference, especially at a time when the country is facing challenges of electricity deficits. And this man is Brian Ngoma. Let's check it out. We uh, specialize in developing solutions that are key to help our nation um, in situations where we're having a hard time or we're having a calamity and so on. So we have got a heavy emphasis on research and development. What we have here is a floating hydrokinetic turbine and uh, what this unit is able to do is that it's able to generate um, electricity um, just uh, by using surface water velocity um, we have been successfully able to develop uh, a patent combination of designs and uh, engineering systems that are able to just have power, uh, electrical power, being generated by um, uh, using surface water velocity. So in a nutshell, it's a unit that does not, does not need any uh, civil construction um, to be able to generate electricity as has, as has been. Uh, and the reason why we've come up with this is because you will understand that over the many years, um, there's been a lot of uh, technological advancement in different areas. Um, we've had a lot of uh, products evolving, um, you know, in technology. Um, whilst hydropower generation has still remained the same, the same traditional way, and which is why we're having the problem that we have now of load shading. It's because we, as a nation, have still continued to rely on the very, very uh, old technology of generating hydro um, electricity. We must understand that even to this day, hydropower is still the unrivaled power source in the world. Uh, it, it's able to uh, give us a 24-hour service of uninterrupted power that is predictable. The issue that we have, yes, we have climate change, but for the most part, the reason why we're not able to generate enough power is because our methods have remained in the old ways. Um, and we as heavy duty solutions have risen to that challenge because um, we're directly affected. If there's no electricity, it means no production in the factory. And uh, that's not good for us as well as everybody else in the nation. So we've risen to the challenge and we decided to develop this product so that we can be able to assist the country to come out of the energy crisis that we have. So the product is a low cost, um, um, uh, low cost uh, product. Uh, in that uh, it's fair to say that 
it's able to generate the least cost on the available market uh, in terms of uh, uh, affordability from the consumers. It's got quick turnaround uh, water to wire times. And as I said, there's no complicated uh, civil structures that need to be built for it. It works directly, uh, either in a portable unit or in a fixed uh, uh, unit way. So um, it's a very, very good development, which obviously we're expecting that going forward, we can get a lot of cooperation from stakeholders, uh, from the government, from the private sector, so that we can be able to scale up production of these units and be able to avail them so that we can help agriculture, we can help mining, we can help business enterprises and everybody else on the domestic uh, side as well. These machines are scalable, depends on what the uh, user uh, preference or what the user demand in the location that they're placed in is. The scalable, each unit can be built from uh, 5 kilowatts to up to uh, 1 megawatt. So the way they are is that, you know, they're variable. So be it you want 10, mega, 10 kilowatts, you want 20, 30, 40, 100, 250, 500, up to one megawatt per module. So the beauty that this technology offers is that it's scalable. So we're able to build them in rows next to each other. So that if hypothetically we want to generate 10 megawatts, for instance, then we can build, depends on the, on the, on the environment that they're placed in, we can then be able to build either 10 by 1 megawatt units or 20 by 500 megawatt units. Depends on what the, the, the parameters in the location, in the river, uh, what, what the parameters are in that, in that location. But the good news is that with this technology, we're able to generate into the hundreds of megawatts with it. And as I said, if you compare the cost of developing this uh, in comparison to building uh, either dams or solar power, for instance. Uh, this is a lot cheaper, it's a lot more reliable, and it's very, very predictable. Uh, a lot of people have got skepticism to say that we don't have enough water. We do have a lot of water available, especially in Zambia. A lot of rivers run through our country, and we must be able to take advantage of that uh, natural um, uh, gift that we have from God to make sure that we change the ways in which we harvest electricity from it. Because as we stand right now, our friends in the neighboring countries like Mozambique, say for instance, where we're importing power, they're sending us power back from the same waters that have traversed and bypassed us in Zambia and end up in Mozambique. We are now buying electricity from there and bringing them here. It's the same thing with Tanzania. We're frantically trying to build a, a power line to get power from uh, Tanzania, whilst Tanzania is selling us hydropower. So that in itself tells you that obviously as a country, we've lagged behind. There's something that we have not been doing well because all these alternative sources that we're looking to draw power from are still, still generating uh, from hydro uh, power. As I said, it's the most reliable form of power um, and you know, it's available throughout the day and throughout the year. Brian Ngoma, CEO there, that project has already taken off but there's need to ensure that support is given to such a heavy duty machine so that it can even be given much more power to generate not only five kilowatts or one megawatts of power, but go beyond that. Imagine how many rivers and lakes do we have in the country that are constantly with water. If we go up in the northern part of the country, we have the Lake Bangweolu, plenty of water there. We have uh, Luapula River, plenty of water there even just nearby along the Mumba Road into the Kafiwe there, we have uh, water running there. So if we can have these machines strategically positioned in those rivers and lakes, then pump that power into the main grid. I'm sure the story of load shedding is soon to be a story of the past. <music>